Hi, this is a talk about Draft and Scylla, our effort to improve a lot of existing Cassandra functionality and add new, strongly consistent features. I'm Konstantin Osipov. I live in Moscow and work on open source databases. In Scylla, I've been involved with implementation of lightweight transactions. Before discussing Raft, let's recap items we delivered recently. Back at Scylla Summit 2019, we announced support for Cassandra lightweight transactions. Lightweight transactions allow all clients to agree on the state of the database before making a change to it. Prior to that, Scylla lacked any strongly consistent features. We made a considerable effort to make sure a lightweight transactions are stable and recently completed an industry standard JEPSON testing for it. In Scylla, LWT are based on Paxos consensus algorithm. Paxos is a leaderless protocol in which each participant stores little state, which was an advantage considering that to be compatible with Cassandra, Scylla needed to allow each partition to be ind independently available. Paxos runs three rounds of network messages to commit each transaction. This is one round trip less than Cassandra, but still is more than necessary in the optimal case. An important property of LWT is that it works over existing tables and alongside existing eventually consistent writes. This is the gain of the fairly high cost of implementation. The overhead on, on the rest of the database if LWT is used is zero. Back in 2019, we also mentioned that we are going to provide an optimized implementation of LWT, which is based on Raft. In this talk, I will discuss our progress with Raft and what else we plan to deliver using it. So what is Raft anyway? It's a leader-based log replication protocol. A very crude explanation of what Raft does is it elects a leader once, and then the leader is responsible for all of the decisions about the state of the database. This helps avoid extra communication between replicas during individual reads and writes. Each node maintains the, the state who the current leader is and forward requests to the leader. Silly clients are unaffected, except now the leader has to do more work than replicates, so the load may be uneven. This means that Scylla has to support multiple Raft groups, Raft instances, to evenly distribute the load between nodes. Raft is built around the notion of replicated log. When the leader re receives a request, it first stores the entry in its durable local log, then make sure this local log is replicated to all of the followers, the replicas. Once the majority of replicas confirm that they have persisted the log, the leader applies the entry and instructs the replicas to do the same. On event of leader failure, the follower with the longest log, the most up of the day log, becomes the leader. Raf defines not only how group makes a decision, but also the protocol for adding new members and removing members from the group. This lays a solid foundation for Scylla topology changes. Uh, they translate naturally to Raft configuration changes, assuming uh, there is a Raft group for all of the nodes in the cluster and no longer need a proprietary protocol. Schema changes translate to simply storing a command in the global Raft log and then applying the change on each node which has a copy of the log. Because of the additional state the current leader stored at each peer, it's not as straightforward to do regular reads and write using Raft. Maintaining a separate leader for each partition would be too much overhead, considering individual partition ab updates may be rare. This is why Scylla alongside Raft works on a new partitioner, which would reduce the total number of uh, tokens or partitions while still keeping the number high to guarantee even distribution of works that would also allow balanced data between partitions more fl flexible. We will call such partitions tablets. Scylla uh, will run an independent Raft instance for each tablet. In the rest of the talk, I will discuss how these three applications of Raft will plan to be implemented. Let's begin with the subject of topology changes and discuss how Raft could be used to improve it. Presently, topology changes in Scylla are eventually consistent. Let's use node addition as an example. A node wishing to join the cluster advertises itself to the rest of the members through gossip. For those of you who are not familiar with gossip, it's an epidemic protocol, which is good for distributing some unfrequently changing information at low cost. It's very frequently used, commonly used for failure detection. So when the cluster is healthy, it uh, imposes very low overhead on the, on the network. And the state of a failing node is distributed, disseminated across the cluster fairly quickly, like a few seconds to several seconds would be a typical interval. Since the gossip is not too fast, uh, the joining node waits by default for 30 seconds to let the news spread. Then nodes, begin, nodes that receive the information about the joining node begin forwarding reads and writes once they become aware of it. Once uh, the joining node n waits for the interval, starts receiving updates, it can begin rebalancing, data rebalancing. Node removal of the commission works similarly 
except that the node gossiping about the node being removed is not the node being removed because not being removed it is basically dead. So uh, this is very similar to real life. Like not all of the gossip that's spread about us is spread by us. Most of it not by us. This poses some challenges. If the node, if some of the node in the cluster is not around while the node is joining, it will not be aware of the new topology. So as soon as it is back and before gossip is actually reaching it and with the news about the joined node, it will assume all topology and will serve hidden rights using all topology. This is not terrible, but repair will be needed to uh, bring the rights back to the new node about, that were served using this old topology. Another issue is that the media that is used for uh, information dissemination gossip is fairly slow. So when we reason about how we could add multiple nodes to the cluster concurrently, uh, we think about splitting node addition or uh, generally topology change operation into multiple steps and communicating between the nodes using each step, so independently. Relying on gossip in that case would be impractical. That would require you know, a 30 second interval for each step. The thrust topology changes are just the core of the algorithm and uh, are configuration changes. It approaches configuration changes very, very similarly uh, to regular reads and writes. The first thing about configuration change, the draft does about the configuration change is stores an information about it in the log. The entry that is stored in the log, the first entry, overall there are going to be the two entries, is special. It informs all of the followers and the replicas, the leader stores the configuration change. They now need to begin to work in this joint configuration, they need to take the new configuration into account while still uh, preserving uh, or uh, ensuring they also reach all of the nodes from the old configuration in case they become the leader. Then when the leader knows that the majority of replicas in the cluster has received this joint configuration, it stores another auxiliary entry in the log that informs the nodes to switch entirely to the new configuration. This approach guarantees that no majority of the cluster uh, actually works in old and new configuration together. It, so some nodes use the old configuration, some nodes use the new configuration. The worst case that can happen is that some nodes in this majority will use joint configuration and other nodes will use old configuration or some nodes use joint configuration and some nodes use new configuration. But since joint configuration both includes old and new, these configurations are compatible. So this preserves linearizability of configuration changes. In Scylla, we plan to use Raft uh, topology changes configuration changes as the first step of any topology change. So when the node, node is join, joining or, rem, or leaving, it will first be added or, or last removed from the raft group, the global raft group with all the nodes. And then we can use the global raft log to consistently store the information about the actual you know, range movi movements, token additions, token removals, and so on. Schema changes are operations such as creating and dropping key spaces, tables, user-defined types, or functions. If they're using Raft, they can also benefit from linearizability. Currently, schema changes in Scylla are eventually consistent. Each Scylla node has a full copy of, of the schema. Request, requests to change schema are validated against the local copy and then are applied locally. A new data item might be added to the immediately added to the imme immediately following the schema change. So before any other nodes even knows about it, there is no con the coordination between changes at different nodes and any node is free to propose a change. The change is eventually propagated through the cluster and the last timestamp means rule is used to resolve conflicts if two changes um, uh, against the same object happen concurrently. Data manipulation is aware of this uh, possible scheme, scheme inconsistency. A specific request carries a schema version with it, still is able to execute requests with divergent history so it will fetch the necessary schema version just to execute the request. This guarantees the schema changes are fully available if, even in pre presence of severe network failures. It has some downsides as well. It is possible to submit changes at conflict, define a table that uses UDT and then drop that UDT. New features such as triggers, stored functions, UDFs aggravate the consistency problem. Schema changes using Raft also benefit from linearizability. After switching them to Raft, any node would still be able to propose a change. The change will be forwarded to the leader. The leader validates it against the latest version of the schema. Then it will store the entry the scheme for the schema change in the Raft log, make sure it's disseminated among the majority of the nodes, and only then it will apply 
the change on all of the nodes in linearizable order. So with this approach, changes will form a linear history and divergent changes will be impossible. It should open the way for more complex but safe dependencies between schema objects, such as triggers, functional indexes, and so on. Replica, which was down while the cluster has been making schema changes, will first catch up with the entire history of the schema changes and only then will start serving reads and writes. There's also a downside. It will not be possible to do a schema change on an isolated node or a node which is isolated from the majority. Still possible, even with uh, this approach, that a node gets a request, say eventually a consistent write, that uses an old version of the schema or a version of the schema a node is still not aware of. In this case, the node which doesn't have the schema will still have to pull it like we do today. Finally, the ultimate feature enabled by Rout are fast and efficient yet strongly consistent tables. Tablets is a term for a database unit of data distribution load balancing first introduced in Google Big Table in 2016, and let's see how they work. Today's SILA partitioning strategy is not pluggable. Compare it with replication strategy. You can change how many replicas you can have, where these replicas are located, what is the consistency level you use for each read and write. SILA partitioner is not like it. All you can do is define a partitioner key, and then the partition key is mapped to a token, and the token is mapped to a specific replica set or a shard. Thanks to hashing and use of vnodes, the data is evenly distributed across the cluster. Most write of the read workloads produce even load on tables of the clustering, even including such uh, workloads like uh, time series workloads. So hotspots are unlikely. Still, like big par partitions, oversized size partitions, and very hot tokens are possible because you, you know you cannot select the partition key perfectly. Recon range scans, even over small tables, require streaming from many nodes, even if they stream very little data. So with tablets, we would like to introduce a partitioning strategy which is based on data size, not on the number of partitions it contains or on, the, on, on partition hash. So uh, tablets uh, split the entire key range over the primary key range and make sure every tablet, tablet contains uh, roughly equal number of data. When the tablet becomes too big, it is split. When it becomes too small, it's coalesced. Two tablets become too small, adjacent tablets. This is called dynamic load balancing. Another good thing about tablets is that even in a very large cluster, there can be too many of them. Like 100,000 tablets is 64 terabytes of data. And this means that we can have a reasonable number of wrapped groups. Every tablet will have its own raft log. If a raft log is used for, for reads and writes, we don't need client, we cannot accept client side timestamps because you know there is a single linearizable order for all writes to the table. Uh, we provide serial con consistency for all queries. Uh, writes do not have to require a read like with LWT. There is no need to repair because the raft automatically repairs itself. There still be maybe a need to repair the raft log, but this is different from repairing the actual data. Those of you who are familiar with consistency of materialized views know that it's very hard to make materialized views consistent in presence of eventually consistent price to the base table. This problem is, will also be solved, solved with uh, raft and tablets. To summarize, original raft doesn't know about partitions, hash, hash functions, tokens, shards, and things like that. In Scylla, we will have to run multiple raft instances side by side. This poses new challenges. How do we spawn a new copy of, of a raft protocol consistently? How much space does the algorithm take? Can we share the, over, share the overhead of the algorithm, such as cost of distributed fa failure detection among many instances? Could we avoid the overhead of double logging, first logging to the raft log and to the commit log? We have already addressed many of these challenges in a library that we implemented on top of CSTAR, Scylla's foundation for asynchronous communication and user-side uh, uh, user, user sc scheduling. We are working on rebuilding schema changes on top of Scylla Raft. The first user-visible impact of the effort is expected in the upcoming year, year 2001. Stay tuned. Thank you. This was a presentation about Raft. I'm Konstantin Osipov, and you can contact me on Twitter and email.